let's take a look at a challenging trigonometric limit. Here it is, the limit of sine x over x as x goes to zero. This limit is the quotient of two functions, so we should be able to use the quotient rule for limits, right? Give that a shot. We have to be a little bit careful when we use the quotient rule for limits. If you try to plug in zero for x, we end up with the limit as x goes to zero to something that's approximately zero over zero. And whenever we have zero divided by zero, the quotient rule doesn't work. So in this case, we can't use it. Right. We can't use that quotient rule here because this limit is of the form zero divided by zero. The good next step is to try to graph the function to see if we can guess the answer from that graph. Well, here it is. So the limit seems to be 1, but how can we prove that? We're going to use the squeeze theorem. Now there are a few steps to this proof, but working through it is a great way to refresh some of your trig knowledge and work with the squeeze theorem. Now, because this is trig, a great place to start is the unit circle. Let's call the angle we're interested in x, and let's measure everything in radians. There are three lengths here that we're going to need. Let's call them a, b, and c. Can you figure out what they are in terms of x? Let's start by looking at a. If you draw this right angle in here, we see that a is opposite the angle x in a right triangle. So we can write that the sine of x is equal to the opposite, which is a, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So that means that a is equal to the sine of x. Next, we can take a look at b. b is the arc of a circle. So how do we find the length of the arc of a circle? Well, we know that if we measure things in radians, an angle, say x, is just equal to the arc length, b, divided by the radius. But the radius here is 1, so this is just b. So b is just equal to x. Okay, last one. Let's take a look at c. c is the leg of a big right triangle. Let's draw this right triangle. That includes c mm -hmm. as a leg. That's the hypotenuse, and that's the leg. Now, x is an angle in that right triangle. If we take the tangent of x, it's equal to the opposite which is c, over the adjacent, which is 1, which is equal to c. So c is equal to the tangent of x. Nice work. Next, let's calculate some of the areas in this figure. Once we have those areas, we'll be able to write down an inequality to help us use the squeeze theorem. So what's the area of this orange region here? The orange region is a triangle. The base here is the radius of the circle. You'll notice that it ends on a circle. And that circle has radius 1, so the base is 1. So the area is 1 half times the base, which is 1, times the height which we said is sine of x, or one-half sine of x. Great. Now try to find the area of this purple region. This is a fraction of the circle, so if you remember how to find the area of a circle, you can take a fraction of it to get this purple area. This purple area is a sector of a circle. The circle has radius 1 here. So the area of a total circle is going to be pi times the radius squared. But we only want a fraction of it. What fraction do we want? Well, this angle's x, and the total amount of angle in a circle is 2 pi. 
So the amount that we want is x over 2 pi over full circle. Again, remembering that the radius here is 1, we're left with 1 half x. Last one. What's the area of this green right triangle? The green right triangle has legs 1 and tangent of x. The area of a right triangle is 1 half times leg 1 times leg 2, because the legs can be thought of as a base and a height. Leg 1 is 1, so I'll write that as 1 half times 1, and leg 2 is the tangent of theta, or the tangent of x here. Putting that together gives us an area of 1 half tangent x. Excellent. Now we have these three areas, so we can write down an inequality. What inequality do these areas satisfy? In other words, how can you arrange these areas from smallest to largest? All of these areas are in this figure, and you'll notice that they're nested. So this orange area is strictly inside the purple area, which comes out here. So this area is less than or equal to the purple area. The green area totally covers the purple area, so it's bigger than it. So the order of areas is 1 half sine x, that's the orange one, that's less than or equal to 1 half x, that's the purple one, and that is less than or equal to 1 half tangent of x, which is the green area. Right. Let's cancel out the 1 half in each of these terms. And let's also divide everything by sine of x. That's fine as long as x isn't 0. Now we're not worried about when x is 0, only when x is near 0. Sine x over sine x equals 1, so let's simplify that. The expression in the middle looks a bit like the sine x over x that we're trying to find the limit of, but now it's sandwiched between these two other expressions. Let's see if we can squeeze it by taking the limit of everything. The limit on the left is 1, since the number 1 doesn't change as x goes to 0. It's always just 1. Try working out the limit on the right. Let's take a look at tangent of x over sine of x. We can write tangent of x as sine of x over cosine of x. And we can divide that whole thing by sine of x. If we simplify this, we're left with 1 over cosine of x. The sine of x's cancel out. Well, that's a little bit easier. What's the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine of x? Well, we can just plug in 0 for x, because the cosine of 0 is 1. This is 1 over 1, which is 1. Right, it's also 1. We've successfully squeezed this expression in the middle and found that it also has to be 1. If the limit as x goes to 0 of x over sine x is 1, then what's the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x? It seems like the limit of the reciprocal should be the reciprocal of the limits, but let's check it carefully using the quotient rule. Let's call x over sine of x f of x. So we know that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is 1. Then what's the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over f of x? That would be x over sine of x. Well, we can use the quotient rule. This is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 1, the numerator, divided by the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x in the denominator. This limit is 1, and this limit is also 1. 
So it's not one of the bad cases for the quotient rule. And this total limit just comes out to 1 divided by 1, which is 1. Right. Sine x over x also approaches 1 as x goes to 0. Here's the graph that we made at the beginning. It was hard work getting this limit, but it can show up over and over again when dealing with trig functions. Often, by using trig identities, you can reduce limits with trig functions to some version of the limit of sine x over x. So this is a great one to remember. Nice work.